training, we're creating a training scar of, we're letting people grab our guns. So we, even when we do the weapon retention, we don't let them grab our guns. We'll either start facing this way, and when they, we turn, they start to grab it, or we'll have them come up and grab it from like the side or the back, or we'll stand in front with our eyes closed, and when we feel them coming, we, we go to it. We don't want them to understand that it's okay for someone to do this, and then we start working our weapon retention. That's a training scar we've been trying to break that we see pretty frequently. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our awareness, our distance management, putting barriers in between me and the subject that I'm talking about, and then deflecting, and then we're gonna to continue to work our lateral movement off the deflection. Because now we can integrate moving lateral rather than backwards. After that guy tries to grab our gun and we deflect him, we shouldn't stand still. We should either engage him in some sort of takedown or for, for this drill, we're gonna move laterally and create some space because he's tried to grab our gun. So we're at a higher use of force already. Your option from there is gonna either be hands-on, take him down into custody or probably create some space and maybe even draw down on him at that point. That's gonna be personal preference, situation dictates, uh, or maybe your environment or where you're at, okay? So I want you to work on moving laterally. And then we'll start doing a little bit of deflection in, in the cubbies here, okay? And start being, all right, I gotta deflect him, and then how do I get my angle to get out to the open area? Because maybe you're starting in there. Does everyone understand that? All right, so first thing I wanna do uh, with your belt on is I want you guys to jump up and down, okay? So we do this on, on the golden slot, okay? So, if you're clearing a building, if you're clearing a building and your handcuffs are in a case that way, people understand. So, there's a guy for the FBI, he just retired, he works out of uh, Westchester County now. What he does is he goes around and he talks to inmates. And what do they hear? What are they doing? Inmates that have attacked police officers, inmates that have wanted to uh, get the jump on them. And the biggest thing they say is they can hear us coming because of our keys and our handcuffs, right? Or they know they're, they're, where, they're, where they're at because the handcuffs come out and they hear the handcuffs come out. So that's why we changed to control on both hands before we get the handcuffs off. And we started tightening up our belt systems by if we have the hanging cuffs, which I used to have, now I have some sort of pouch that my cuffs don't make noise when I'm moving. One, you guys don't have full pursuit, so you don't have to, right? So, but when you're chasing them, that was one of the things they said, they could hear the keys and they could hear them coming. So if he breaks that angle and then the cop doesn't hit his tying that angle up, he just comes right around, they know he's coming. So just something to think about with your belt. The bad guys are listening for you coming because they can hear you coming. Most of the guys who wear this style, yep. they do it now because they don't have enough real estate on their, on yep. their belt. And that kind of just narrows the narrows real estate. Down. Puts the cuffs a little lower. This piece too is like a lot of people like at our agency were wearing these big keychains and it was flopping as you wear them. So like get one of ones that wraps it, something around it. Uh, if, if you're gonna wear those, okay. maybe get them so where it secures somehow, so it's not quite as loud when it's moving. Okay, that's just what he came back with. He said he came in and talked to uh, a group we were teaching a two week course to. And that was the biggest feedback he gave was he had went to our two day research. So what we did in New York was if you were already a DT instructor, prior to us changing the curriculum, we put you through a 16 hour grandfathering research, which was covering like mainly new material. And he was uh, FBI DT, but wanted to come see what our research was. He came through it and he was like, man, this is awesome because what my research is showing is the way you guys are changing the cuffing, the way you're doing this is like perfect for what they are saying. All right, so we're gonna partner up, and all we're gonna do is, I'm gonna be interviewing this guy in some sort of an interview position, okay? We understand that we can't interview everybody from this far away. If we could, that would be awesome, but in a realistic police world, this just does not happen. It doesn't occur all the time. So we have to have our awareness. What are things that we can be aware of when we're interviewing this guy that might set off um, some red check marks. Where he's looking. Where's he looking? Maybe even ask you what kind of gun you have. Okay. Maybe he's starting to move that way. Right. Maybe he's starting to move that way towards towards my weapon. Okay. Be aware if he's eyeing that 
that gun is eyeing some weapon on your person, start to allow those to be alerts. Okay, those should be your awareness alerts. Maybe there's a couple people standing here. Which way are you facing? One, maybe I want them all in front of me, but two, what if they're in front of me and now the corner's behind me? So those are things you gotta put into perspective if you're in a house. The doorway should be somewhere where you can get to if you need to, but you also want people in front of you. So that can be tricky. That awareness is how you, when you come into places, like we we're talking about, come into a common hallway and there's a stairwell or even a hallway, leave the common door open. Why? Because you never know when you're going to have to retreat out that door. And if that's an inward opening door, then it could, it could be difficult. Even outward opening door is going to take time. So be aware of all the situations that, that you have. Two, distance management. I still want to be where I can talk to him and maybe touch him, but I want to be able to understand if he starts to come towards me, okay, I'm moving my angles or I'm telling him to stay back. Okay? I'm not allowing him to invade my personal space. We're not having an interview conversation here. We're having an interview conversation here. Can I be bladed away? Yes. Okay, I'm bladed away. Are there situations where you may be like this? Yes. I really like if I'm in a crowded or congested space, I love having my forearm or my elbow on the top of my, my uh, rail. I just let it sit there. I talk with my hands up. Go to punch defense, but my hand is on that gun, and it doesn't look like I'm like okay, holding it in. It's just resting there. I can feel that gun there. Okay. Distance management. If he starts to creep in that space, listen. I just don't want to close talkers. Stay there. Okay, just stay there. I'll talk to you from here. You guys have to run. You guys own that situation. You can't let him own that situation. This is your personal space, and we have a lot of stuff in our space that is dangerous. Don't let people be in that space. And then what are your barriers? My barriers are my hands, my barriers are my forearms, my barriers are my head, my barriers are my feet, okay, my knees, whatever I can use to stop him from approaching if it's that lunge or that a surprising attack. So I'm gonna be talking to Conrad and at some point he's going to start trying to just reach out towards my gun and grab it or just reach like maybe he wants to see what it is. It may be He's trying to take my gun. It may be he wants to just reach out and touch my gun because he's an EDP, he's a whatever it might be, all right? So I don't want him making contact with that gun. We need to deflect that, and then I want you guys to get offline and start moving. Work on your lateral movement, okay? You could also engage into a takedown. We'll get there in a few minutes. I want you to in disengage first, all right? Going into a takedown is we're going to be in congested space and or your option could be take down in the open but let's work on the disengage and then we'll step it up to you'll have the option you guys got that so kind of like the demo will be i'm talking to conrad uh do you have id on you pretty good off my gun and i'm going to start moving creating that space option two is if i go here right and he's reaching could i easily go to here and hit a takedown yeah i can that's my preference that's my option we have to understand that we can't just teach them to take that guy down because what if it's a smaller officer an officer that lacks in hands-on skills what would be her better option or his better option if they reach for the gun they can create distance and space get on the radio get their gun out get some cover he already showed he's trying to grab my gun once okay we don't want him to be able to grab that gun a second time if you have the skill set and you want to go right into a takedown or your only option is that, then we fight from those situations, but we'll get there. Step one is we deflect, create space. Now, let's work on, under the pressure, he grabbed, right? He grabbed, gun grab. Moving, I want the gun coming out while you're moving, okay? So I want you guys to work on getting the gun out while you're moving. So he starts to grab from my gun, gun grab. Comes up and I'm moving, okay? I'm gonna move lateral. If I don't like the way I'm moving, I can turn and move back the other way. But then once the gun's out and you moved, gun goes back in, but we don't look at our holster. So we're gonna get practice in on deflecting, distance management, moving and drawing our weapon, 
okay? The proper way, and then when the weapon goes away, it goes away without looking at holes. Okay, got it? So we're gonna put a whole bunch of things together in one simple drill. So you can break a whole lot of training scars in one drill. Got it? One, two, three.